Hello everyone and welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. I've had a lot of people asking me lately about the transition from dormancy to the growing season. There's a lot of videos out there talking about dormancy itself and actual care, but not a lot of videos discussing how to pull the Venus flytrap from dormancy and move it into the growing season. It should be noted that this also goes for my Saracenia. They get virtually the same care as my Venus flytraps. I give the SARS a bit more water during dormancy, but other than that, they transition with my Venus flytraps exactly the same from dormancy to growing season. These videos are always a little bit tricky since everyone's situations are a little bit different. Let me give you a quick overview of what my plants have been up to in the last two months. I don't move my plants directly from a cold corner in my garage out to the direct sun. It's actually a process. In March where I live, we get some daytime highs of over 50 degrees Fahrenheit, but some overnight lows are still going down into the 20s at times. With overnight colds being that low, I'm not comfortable moving them out of dormancy just yet. However, I really want to extend the growing season, so I like to use grow lights to get the process started. During winter dormancy, I give my plants 4 hours of artificial grow light a day. I do this during the nighttime to help give them a bit of heat during the cold winter nights. When March hits, I bump the light up from 4 hours to 6 hours. Then when April comes, I bump it up from 6 hours to 8 hours. Midway through April, I turn the timer up to 10 hours. April is a strange month where I live. Daytime highs can be in the 70s sometimes, and overnight lows can still get into the upper 20s, which means I can't quite pull them completely out of dormancy yet, but I can increase the amount of light that they are getting. Remember, dormancy is triggered by cold temperatures and reduced photo period. As you increase the photo period, you're signaling your plants to start waking up. I keep an eye on the weather report when I see nighttime lows staying in the 40s. I consider this my signal to bring my traps out of my grow tent that's in my garage and into the actual sun. This brings me to my first talking point, acclimation. When you pull your plants out of dormancy, it's really important to not just throw them out into full sun. They haven't seen sunlight in several months. Even if you had your plants exposed to grow lights like I have, it's still not exactly the same as sun exposure. I place my Venus flytraps in Saracenia in an area where they get 5-6 to six hours of daily sunlight. I don't want to overdo it. I keep a very close eye on them for the first week. Look for signs of burning. If the edge of the leaves start to turn red or brown, it might be burning. A little burning is just fine, it's actually really normal. If you see the entire leaf starting to turn brown or dark red, you might want to find a way to limit the sun exposure. I leave them in this area for about a week. If there's no burning or minimal burning, I move them to their final place for the growing season. Here they get about 10-12 to 12 hours of full sun. For the first week of moving them, I again keep a very close eye on them. Make sure there's no severe burning. If bad burning occurs, I'll move them back to the previous spot for another week. If you do not have grow lights, I recommend you bring the Venus flytraps and Saracenia out when daytime temps start hitting the high 40s and 50s. I recommend putting them back into their protected area at night if lows are staying below 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Venus flytraps and Saracenia are both pretty cold hardy and can survive some freezing cold spells, but the freezing does increase the chance of them not surviving. I can already hear people in the comments talking about how they leave theirs out all winter under 6 inches of ice. Yes, they can survive this. However, this is also known to kill them. I'm trying to give advice that gives the plants the best chance of survival. I don't think letting them freeze is good advice for new growers. The most important thing with acclimating them is to just pay close attention. Watch for the burning. If you don't see burning, they can have more light or more sun. Keep in mind, old leaves from last fall that survived dormancy will be more subject to burning. If you start to see the brownish red form on the edge of the leaf, this is usually a sign of burning. If it's just the older traps from the last fall that are burning a bit, you're probably okay. If the entire leaf is being consumed by the reddish brown, you may want to pull them back just a bit. If you're going straight from no light to sunlight, I recommend starting at about 2 hours a day for the first week. Bump it up another 2 hours every new week and be patient, this doesn't have to be a fast process. There's a few other really major talking points that I want to go over with you, but real quick before we do that, let me show you how you can get your hands on your very own Venus flytrap or Saracenia cultivar. I'm so excited to be teaming up with California carnivores. They are one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year-round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery that you fall in love with. On top of that, they have been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter Bug Eater at checkout. That's B-U-G-E-A-T-E-R, Bug Eater. I have links in the description and the pinned comment so you can head on over and pick out the perfect carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and head on back to the video. Another really big talking point that I want to bring up is watering. When your plants are in dormancy and exposed to less light in colder temperatures, 
you really should be reducing the water considerably. Usually, most people tray water Venus flytraps and Saracenia. During the colder months, I may only water them once a month. This depends on your substrate, but whatever substrate you use, it will hold water much longer than it will in mid-growing season. Giving them constant water in the tray during colder temps exposes the plant to the possibility of crown rot. Once you move your plants out of the dark cold area and into the warmer lighter area, you'll need to increase their water. The most important thing with watering is understanding there is never a black and white answer with water. Watering is tricky and you'll really need to understand how to read the plants. Feel the substrate, understand the weight of your pots. This can help you really know when water is needed. Once the temperatures get a little higher and the light is constant, you should be okay to go back to full water. Keep those trays full and never allow the planters to dry out. I've got a great video that talks all about watering. I'll go ahead and link it in the description for you so you can learn how to water your plants best in your area. I have a few more important things to go over, but real quick, if you're finding this video useful or entertaining, please make sure to pour some water on the like button and subscribe to my channel to help make it grow. You being here is supporting my dream of opening my own carnivorous plant nursery someday. Thank you for being here and sharing your valuable time with me. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Okay, I'll stop yapping. Yeah, let's go ahead and get back to the video. It's also worth calling out that this is the best time for repotting. If I'm going to repot my Venus flytraps or Saracenia, I'd like to do it right before they start growing again, usually in February or March before I increase the lighting. I recommend repotting every one to two years. If your substrate is really sunk into your pot, it's a good sign that it's time to repot. Also, while your substrate is wet, give it a smell. If it has a bad odor, that's another good sign that it's time to repot. I actually repotted pretty much all of mine this spring. I purchased these new taller planters. They take a half gallon of substrate each. I had to make a lot of peat, perlite, and glass mix this spring, but my plants have been thriving ever since I repotted them. I plan on selling my soil mix here really soon, probably in the next two weeks or so. If you're watching this video, check the description to see if it's available. It's a premium mix that you won't regret putting your plants in. I also have some kits that will come with the planter and the soil. Whether you're repotting your plants or not, this is also a really good opportunity to really clean them up and trim off all the dead growth. This will help the healthy parts of your plants to absorb more light. Removing the dead growth will also help your plant avoid any rot, mold, or mildew. The old dead growth tends to rot and promote unhealthy growth. Trim it all away to help your plant be more healthy and more aesthetically pleasing. Now that your plants are out in the wild, you're going to want to pay really close attention for pests and critters. Squirrel and bird attacks are a real thing. Both birds and squirrels are building nests this time of year and they're always looking for something to help. If you're using a long fiber sphagnum moss, birds love to take that back to their nest. If you notice signs of disturbance, I recommend putting your plants behind some kind of cage or chicken wire to really help combat the critters. You also have to watch for pests. This time of year, aphids run rampant in many parts of the country. They tend to be drawn to flowers. You'll often see aphids huddled around the flower, even before it's opened. This is another reason why I like to cut flower stalks and propagate them rather than letting them flower. I always notice less aphids on the plants where I've already cut the flower stalk. They usually aren't big enough to trigger the trap and can also cause a lot of damage. If you start to see aphids, try to remove them manually. You also have to watch out for spider mites. They seem to be making their rounds right now. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about pests and how to get rid of them. Each situation is different and the methods of removal range from natural methods to chemical pesticides to submerging the plant in water. If you suspect a pest, I recommend getting some good close clear photographs and joining a group on Facebook. Post the photo and see if someone can help diagnose and assist with getting rid of those pests. I really wish that I was more help here, but trying to diagnose any pest problem is really something that you need to have photos for. It's the most wonderful time of the year, growing season. I'm so excited to get my plants out of their dormant state and into the full swing of the growing season. I really hope that you are able to walk away with a good idea of how to get your plants out of dormancy. If you have questions, please post a comment below. Please make sure to check out the video popping up on the screen right now. This was my process for repotting all my Venus flytraps and Saracenia this spring. It gives some good care tips and goes into detail on how to repot your favorite carnivorous plants. Thank you so much for being here with me today and I really hope to catch you in my next video. Bye!